Okay, those of you with pets know that you have to be nice to them and you have to give them TLC, or tender loving care, for them to live a happy and healthy life. This is my dog Finn, and I try the best I can to give her that tender loving care that she needs. So for example, well, we're just going to let her go because she doesn't want to be here right now. We're going to use that phrase, that idea, to help you figure out how to integrate quotations into your own sentence structure. Now this can seem like a complex idea, but once you remember some basic parts that you need in any kind of sentence that has textual evidence, you're going to find that you can use these three parts in any sentence and just build this skill like you would any other. And if this is a skill you can master, you're really, really going to add some sophistication to your writing. So let's try it. All right. We look at this handout, and you can find it on this blog post as well. I say you have to show a little TLC when integrating quotations to your writing. That means there's three parts to a sentence that need to be included in order for it to work smoothly into your own sentence structure. The idea here is you're not just dropping a quote and giving it to your reader. Instead, you're presenting it nicely in a way that is smooth and in a way that fits right into the rhythm of your own language. So, I've highlighted this in different colors. We've got a transition, which is just a transitional word or phrase, a connective word or phrase. We also call those linking words or phrases. The lead-in is probably the most important part. And for the lead-in, you want to give the context of what's happening in the story right before the quote. Another way of thinking about this is just explain in as simple and as direct words as possible what is happening in the story right before the quote that you're going to give. And if you can do that, you're going to make a nice transition or a nice lead-in to the quotation itself. And then you don't want to forget your citation. In this case, we're using MLA citation form, and I'll go into the particulars when I see show you the examples. Let's look at the first example from A Single Shard by Linda Sue Park. For example, when explaining why they search through garbage heaps for their meals, Crane Man says to Tree Ear, stealing and begging made a man no better than a dog. That's a nice sentence, and we can look at how it works if we break down the three different parts. First, I begin with a transitional word or phrase. For example, whenever you begin a sentence with a transitional word or phrase, please do not forget the comma. It's really important. You always put the comma there. And then this next part is my lead-in in red. It's where I explain what's happening in the story right before the quote. Then I give another comma, a space, Double quotation marks, notice there's no space in between those quotation marks. I'm capitalizing the first word of that quotation, and I go ahead and give the quotation. I'll end by giving my MLA parenthetical citation, and parenthetical citation just means putting some information in parentheses. A couple things to point out. Please notice that this is the author's last name space, and then the page number. I didn't put a P period. I didn't put uh, anything like, we don't put anything like this. We don't put page, nothing like that. We don't even put a comma. Some of you are putting the author's name, comma, space, and the page number. Just get rid of all those things. It's author's last name, space, page number, close the parentheses, and then notice this period. It goes to the right. It ends the it, it ends the sentence that we're working with, so it goes to the right outside of the quotation marks. And that's really odd. You don't typically do that. So let's look at a couple different examples and just see if you can see it. Um, here's another example from a book called Haroon in the Sea of Stories by Salman Rushdie. You don't have to know this story to see that I'm using the same TLC structure. In addition, when Haroon realizes the inherent beauty of the Sea of Stories, he expresses regret that he did not notice the splendor earlier and hopes that he can do his bit. Notice again, I have my transition to start the sentence. When I use a transitional word or phrase, I put a comma after it. Then I explain what's happening in the story right before the quote. Here I'm just paraphrasing the story, really, in my own words. And I put the comma, put the quote, using my formatting correctly, author's last name, which is Rushdie, page number 137, and I'm putting that period to the right. Please try to remember to do that. 
The biggest trick to doing this well is to not fall into a comma splice. You're going to try this the first couple times and you're going to make this an entire sentence and then this an entire sentence. And remember from our work with run-ons and comma splices, you can't join two complete sentences with just a comma. So as you try to work with this structure, please, this is a dependent clause or it's not a complete sentence, this lead-in, but it's building up to work in with the quote and make a complete sentence. Let's look at two more examples and then you're gonna try some of this on your own or maybe use some of the other resources that I put on this blog post to help you figure out how to integrate your quotations into your own sentence structure. In the same way, here's my transition, here's my lead in. The second paragraph turns the reader's attention to the quote, hopeful green, end quote, landscape and its own struggle to survive as quote, havoc shrubs were sharpening lance and spike against the future, end quote, author's name, page number, period. Notice in this, I tried to take two different quotes and kind of just put in just what I needed with the quote, not the entire sentence, but I'm just taking hopeful green and that last part, and I'm mixing it into my own sentence structure. When I put it just within the sentence structure, just a few phrases, I don't have to capitalize or put a comma there because I'm blending it into my own sentence structure. And they both come from page 28, so since both of these come from page 28, I just, at the end of it, put white, the author's last name, in page 28 and in the period. If this were maybe from page 27, right after here, I'd have to put parentheses 27. This is getting pretty complicated, and you can just ask me in class uh, when you get to a situation like this. Let's look at one more example. And in this example, can anybody think, let's look at the end, why I haven't put the author's name here, Linda Sue Parks. And if you said, because I already put it in my sentence structure, you're right. If I work the author's name into my own sentence structure, I don't then need to put it again in the parentheses. So here's my TLC, transition, lead in, and then don't forget that MLA citation. Three things. So in contrast, comma, Park shows that Trier's dedication to others is the most important part of his character. When after the vases are destroyed by the robbers, comma, the author writes, comma, quote, failure, the most dishonorable failure. He had been unable to keep the vases safe, but it was Trier's duty to return, end quote. And I just noticed a typo. Let's fix that. That's okay. Here I've got my transition. Then I've got my lead in. And then I'm just, this author writes is an important part to make sure that I don't have a comma splice and I put my quote in and page number. I hope this helps you figure out and understand how to integrate um, sentences into your own sentence structure. You'll need to work with this a little bit more. And there's some other advice here on this handout that you may want to take a look in. I won't use it now because the video is going long enough. But um, take a look, ask me in class if you have more questions and thanks for watching.